Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and this video is on empirical and molecular formulas. Now, we did a previous video on empirical and molecular formulas, but in this video, we will actually um, find the empirical formula from either percentages given or masses given of substance. And we'll also, like before, find the molecular formula once we have the empirical formula and the molar mass. Now, if you're given percentages, you can use a simple memory device to um, eventually get the empirical formula. And it goes like this. We change the percent to mass, okay? We will then change the mass to moles. Now, which number you get that's the smallest in terms of moles, you divide everything by that number. And if we get a fraction like 0.5, we'll multiply till whole. So we'll use an example to explain a memory device. Now, this is a typical problem. You're given carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and sulfur, okay, my mistake, and um, you can be asked to find the empirical formula. Now, as you said before, the first step of the memory device is to change the percent to mass, and that simply means you will take the percent sign and change it to grams, all right? So instead of saying 24.97%, you will say 24 0.97 grams for carbon. All right. Um, for hydrogen, we will say 8.38 grams hydrogen, and for sulfur, we will say 66.65 grams of sulfur. All right, that's our first step. Now, what we'll do next, we'll change the grams into moles. Now, we know how to change grams to moles or moles to grams. We need the GFM of the substance. So you always have your reference tables handy. Now, we know by doing a lot of these problems, right, that the GFM of carbon will be 12.0, right? Okay, so we'll use that in a second. So we're going to change all these guys into moles. All right, so I'll use a different color. All right, so... We want to get rid of grams, so grams goes in the bottom of here for carbon, and we'll put 12.0 right there. We didn't make it up. That comes off our reference table. We are trying to find moles, so that unit goes in the top, and we know that um, the GFM of any substance is always equal to one mole. All right, for hydrogen, same thing. We want to get rid of grams of hydrogen, so grams will go in the bottom right here. We're looking for moles of hydrogen, so what moles goes in the top right here, and that will be actually one mole, all right? And the mass, the GFM of, of um, hydrogen will be 1.0, all right? And the same thing for sulfur. You want to get rid of grams of sulfur, so you must put the same unit in the bottom, okay? Um, it's equivalent to one mole, and the mass of sulfur that's equivalent to one mole of GFM would be 32.0. All right, so this will get us um, our masses to moles. So we'll put our equal sign right here for each of these guys, and you'll have your calculator handy, and you'll calculate these guys right here. All right, so what's going to happen is um, 24.97 divided by 12.0. From my calculations to two decimal places, I get 2.08. Now, normally, when you do these calculations, you want to uh, put your answers at two or three decimal places, okay? All right, it's 2.08 moles for carbon. Okay, for hydrogen, it's going to be approximately 8.38 moles, all right? And for sulfur, okay, it's going to be 2.08 or so. All right, so we see that we got 2.02, 2.08. So let's flip back to the memory device for a second. We change our percent to grams, to mass. We change our mass to moles. Now we're going to find the lowest number and divide by that lowest number. So 2.08 in both cases, right? 2.08, 2.08 is our lowest number. So we'll divide everything by 2.08. So 2.08 is going to go into that. 2.08 will go into that. And 2.08 will go into that. All right, so this will be 1. This will be 4. K 
Okay, and this will be one. Okay, so what we do next, right? We have all nice whole numbers here, so we don't have to multiply till whole because all our ratios are whole numbers, so we don't have to uh, worry about the last step right now. Now, we would have to worry about it, for example, if one of these numbers gave us like 1.5 or 4.5 or something like that. But since they're nice whole numbers, we don't have to worry about multiplying till whole. And our answer simply would be C H 4 S. Okay? Now, how do I know that? Because carbon, there's only one of them. There's four hydrogens and there's one sulfur. So we don't have to show ones for subscripts when we have um, uh, just one. Okay, so that's our final answer. And you're done. You move on. Okay, next question. Now we notice in this question we are given the molar mass of the substance right over here. Okay, and they want you to find the molecular formula. Right. Now, before we can find the molecular formula, we must know the empirical formula. So we do the same thing again. We do our percent to mass. All right. So they give us percentages. We will change the percentages to grams. So instead of saying 49.48% of carbon like they have right here, we will simply say 49.48 grams of carbon. Okay, we will say 5.19 grams of hydrogen. We will say 28.85 grams of nitrogen. And last but not least, 16.48 grams of oxygen. So that's our first step. We change our percent to mass. Now the next step is going to be change the mass into moles. So we'll set up our conversion factors as before for each of them. We will draw a dividing line. Okay, now there's a different color again. i use orange. Now we want to change grams of carbon into moles of carbon. So we look looking for moles, so moles goes in the top. We need to get rid of grams of carbon, okay? So grams must be in the bottom. So grams of carbon goes in the bottom. And we know that 12.0 grams is equivalent to how many moles? Yes, GFM is equivalent to one mole. And we do the fill in the rest. So 1.0 grams for hydrogen goes here, because we want to cancel grams of hydrogen out. And that's equivalent to one mole for hydrogen. We will put in the bottom right here 14.0 grams for nitrogen. All right, this is from nitrogen. That's also equivalent to one mole. And oxygen will be 16.0 grams for oxygen, and one mole goes there. Now, all these numbers are on your periodic table so please uh, don't panic we didn't make them up they're on your periodic table the GFMs of each of these elements right here all right so simply what's our next step we will um, do divisions right and what's gonna happen is we will get for this first guy right here we will get approximately 4.12 moles all right for carbon now the next guy will simply be five 0.19 moles. Now, guys, always, always use units to see which step you're at, because sometimes what happens is folks forget um, to put units, and they forget they, they skip a step by mistake, and they get horrible answers. So, always put your units in to see where you're at. All right. Okay. So for nitrogen, okay, it's going to be 2.06 moles. And for oxygen, it's going to be 1.03 moles. All right, so we see that our lowest number is, out of all these guys, is 1.03, right? Now, once again, we change our percent to masses. We change our mass to moles. Now, we're looking at our third step, divide by smallest number, which is 1.03. So we're going to divide everything by 1.03. So I'll use a different color. 
Now this divided by 1.03, this will divide by 1.03 and so on. All right, so just fill them all in. 0.03. All right, so this will be equal to approximately four. This will be equal to approximately five. This will be equal to two, and that will be equal to one. So what happens now is you have a empirical formula, right, of <clears throat> C4, okay, because it's four right here for carbon, all right, H5, because there's H's and there's five of them right there, N2, put it in there, N2, and O, all right, because there's only one oxygen in the ratio. Now, they asked you to find the molecular formula, right? And we did this before. You need to get the mass, okay, of this guy right here. Okay, you get the mass of that. That's your mass of your empirical formula. So what's going to happen is the mass of the empirical formula will go in the bottom here, all right? And your molar mass or your GFM will go in the top. And we'll divide those two guys. So 194.19 will go in the top. And the mass of this right here, this empirical formula, will go in the bottom. Now if you add these guys up, you'll see that um, 4 times 12 for um, carbon is 48. We have 5 hydrogens. We have 2 nitrogens. 2 times 14 is 28. And oxygen is 16. We only have one of them. So 48 plus 5, plus 5 plus 28 plus 16 should give us around 97. So we'll put 97 right there. And 97 into 194.19 is approximately 2. All right? So that will be our whole number. And as we said before, what we do next, right, we use this 2 to multiply the subscripts of our empirical formula. So simply 2 times 4 will give us 8, right? So we'll say C8, all right? 2 times 5 will give us 10, so it's H10. 2 times 2 right here will give us 4 nitrogen, so N4. And 2 times 1 for the oxygens will give us O2. Now this would be our molecular formula, okay, for this substance caffeine, okay, which is famous in coffee and tea and so on. Okay, and we move on. All right, last problem. Now in this problem right here, notice, right, they didn't give us any percentages. They started us off with grams, so we don't panic. They helped us out. So they skipped step one, number one, and they gave us, they started us off with step number two. So all you simply do is you put your grams down here, 0.321 grams down for carbon. You put your um, grams down for hydrogens, which is 0 0.044 grams for hydrogen and you put down your um grams of sulfur which is 0 0.285 and you just continue as before okay now we took they took care of percent to grams for us no we want to change our grams into moles all right so we set a conversion factor for each of them we are looking for moles in each case so what happens is once again We'll put 12.0 grams for carbon in the bottom because we want to get rid of these units right here. And we're looking for moles, so moles goes in the top and one goes there. So likewise for hydrogen, we have 1.0 grams for hydrogen. It's always the GFM of any substance, so it's equal to one mole of that substance. All right, and for uh, sulfur, it'll be 32.0 grams per every mole. All right. So we next the next step would be simply doing divisions. All right, so when we do the divisions, we will get for the first guy 0 0.0268. For the 
for the next guy we'll get 0 0.044 because it's simply one into the same thing and for the last guy we will get a small number 8.9 times 10 to the negative 3 now all these guys are moles right moles of this moles of that and moles of sulfur all right okay now the next step is to do what yes we have to divide by the lowest number of moles which is this guy right here right so we divide all these guys all these moles by 8.9 times 10 to the negative 3 8.9 times 10 to the negative 3 8 Point nine times 10 to the negative 3 and we'll get for this guy right here 3 we'll get for that guy 5 and this last one we will get 1 okay so the empirical formula will simply be C H5 S all right now the mass of this right the empirical formula mass would be It'll be C3, my mistake, C3, H5S. So the mass of this, 3 over here, the mass of this would be um, 36, because 3 times 12 is 36, plus 5 times 1 is 5, plus 32 for sulfur, all right? And when we add 36, 5, and 32 up, we should get something close to 73, all right? So what do we do with that 73? They gave us the molar mass over here, right, of 146. So we'll use those two numbers. The molar mass goes in the top. Okay, the molar mass is 146, right? Divide up by 73, which is the mass of the empirical formula. We will get 2 from that. And what do you do with that 2? Yes, you will multiply the subscripts of this empirical formula right here so 2 times 3 gives us 6 carbons so C6 2 again times 5 will give us H10 for hydrogens and last but not least for sulfur you will simply get 2 times 1 is 2 and that would be your molecular formula so C6 H10 S2 is your molecular formula C3 H5S is your empirical formula, and you're done. All right. All right, guys. I hope this video was a help. This is empirical and molecular formulas. If you're given percentages or masses, all right, you use this memory device. It's a nice help, and you go from there. Now, notice that we have to know to change mass into moles and so on, so don't forget your stoichiometry. Take care.